talk about as part of the open shift to 4.x deployment process there are another prerequisite that is configured dhcp scope and in our lab environment we are going to install red hat open shift and our infrastructure platform is vspa and we have a nimble storage using as a shared storage and we are using the esx esxi is running on hpe synergy compute nodes okay so let's quickly recap our red hat open shift 4.x on vspa solution architecture as part of solution architecture in our previous session we already validated our infrastructure platform vcenter internet access and provision network and we validated the red hat enterprise linux op open shift container platform helper vm and we configured the dns server and in this session I'm mainly focusing on configured DHCP server and also the static router. Okay, so as part of this, let's uh, review the pre installation steps. So until these steps, whatever we already tick mark, these steps are completed previously. So now I'm focusing on configuring DHCP scope for uh, OpenShift cluster nodes. Okay. If you remember within our action plan, there are some IP address we dedicatedly reserved for the DHCP scope. If you see in our pre-implementation step, the DHCP scope IPs are starting from 192.168.243.50 until 60. It's approximately 11 IPs I am reserving for the DHCP scope. Suppose in your organization, when you are doing the same implementation, based on your infrastructure IP network, you can choose the network series. So I, in my lab, I'm just using this network series okay and now let's create the scope using the dhcp server on microsoft windows server let's log into windows system let's say let me log in Once we log into the Windows Server, it's running with the three roles, Active Directory, DNS, and DHCP. So to open the DHCP, let's open the start run, DHCP MGMT.msc. So within our DHCP console, so just let's see the server name is ad01 nps lab.com. So if you expand IP version 4 and IP version 6, we can see currently there is no scopes are available. If you are planning to create a scope, just right click here, IP version 4 and choose new scope. When I select the new scope, it clearly says that new scope wizard. Welcome to the new scope wizard. To continue, click next. And we have to enter the scope name. Let's say scope name. We are planning to give our same as our cluster name OCP410 and it is dedicated for OpenShift cluster. Okay, so now click on next and the scope range. If you see our IP address, scope range starting from 192.168.243.50 and end IP is 60. So the same IP we can give here. So start IP address 192.168.243. And start, it's start with 50 and ends with 60. So 192.168.243. And end IP address is 60. So total 11 IP address I am reserving. And the length of this uh, subnet mask is 24. That means uh, 8 octant 888824. 255.255.255.0. Now click on next. And add exclusion and delay. If you want to exclude any IP within this scope, you can add it here. But currently, we do not have any exclusion IPs. So click on next. And lease duration is eight days lease duration. That means every eight days, IP address will be renewed. OK, click on next. And configure DHCP options. Yes, I want to configure these options now. Click on next and the router. See in our architecture diagram, there is a router, right? We are using the router is nothing but a default gateway. So our default gateway is we can use our lab network default gateway 192.168.243.254 is the gateway. OK, so now click on add. So default gateway also known as router is added click on next and the parent domain name is it's a domain name is anpslab.com and the server name is our ad server ad01 and normally when you resolve it's already resolved with a 44 ip address 
okay and currently it's already added 44 ip address so now uh, instead of keeping this ip address in top sometimes there is a ipipa ip address are adding so we have to add one ip ipipa ip address automatic private ip addressing 169 dot and 254 dot we can use 75 dot and 62 okay so when you enter the ipipa ip we can just keep this ip is in the this will help us to pointing to the any of the other IPs. So we can keep this as a up. And another public DNS like 8.8.8.8. .8 sometimes Linux clients will point it to the public DNS also. So another IP is 8.8.4.4. Okay. So first we can keep the IP IP and followed by we can keep actual DNS IP and then we can use public DNS IPs. OK, this is the sequence we should follow. The reason is suppose normally whenever our DNS server is unreachable immediately it instead of going to the public DNS, it will point to same our DNS server only. OK, so now click on next and win server currently we are not using. So just leave it as blank and activate the scope. Yes, I want to activate this scope now. Click on next and click on finish. So once you click on finish, you can see the scope is created. All the scope information we can see under the scope options. So let's select the scope option. We can see router is 254 and DNS server is configured with the sequence and the DNS domain name is anpslab.com. OK, this is the one point. And another key point is we have to add a Normally, whenever the Linux clients pointing to a, a DHCP server, it will also look for a specific static route. In order to provide a static route, we need to create a classless static route. So that option is available under the DHCP scope options. So right click the DHCP scope and select. You can choose configure options under configure scope options. We can look for a classless static routes in general that number is 121 is the number so just look for your one to one number see one to one classless static route this is also important point because sometimes whenever the any linux client trying to point instead of pointing to the other routing we are specifically dedicating our network route OK, so click on add route. So our route is because our client should be within the 192.168.243.0 network within this network and subnet mask is 255.255.255.0 and the router will be our gateway 192.168.243.254. This is our default gateway. So this will be like a use the client's assign IP when you are using uh, either you can choose this option or manually better to enter the manual 255.255.255.0. We are keeping the static route 192.168.243.254. Sorry. Yeah, now click on OK. So this will be become as a static route. We can apply and click on OK. So now when you just refresh the scope options, when you see here, the router is updated and DNS server details updated. DNS name is OK. And we also added a for Linux client specifically, we dedicated a static route. Whatever this network 192.162.243 network system, it is looking for a DHCP server. By default, the routing is set with a dot .254 IP address. OK, so let's back to our slide. See the scope is created and domain name. We given the same name and we choose the cluster name is OCP 410 and we use the default gateway within the scope creation dot 254. OK, and another point, whatever we discuss, let's quickly recap DNS above information we given as 169 series IP IP and our AD DNS server IP and public DNS IP. The importance is if you will not bring up our DNS server IP address entry, then all the DNS lookup requests would land up in whatever DNS IP would at the top. So which in our case would be 8.8.8 uh, .8 leading to failure. So that's the reason we keep our DNS as well. And another point is configure static routes. So, so static routes can be configured through DHCP scope options. We already configured through 
BHCP scope option and 121 classless static routes. And this means anything routed to this network within our network, 192.168.243 series network, would have this gateway as a gateway. 254 is become as a gateway. And this completes the DHCP configuration for dynamic IP allocations. That means automatically assigning the IP address from DHCP server. And based on individual requirements, suppose if you are a network have a different uh, environment based on individual requirement one can configure additional properties in dhcp scope options okay so in my current lab this is the recommended options okay that's it now if we recap based on our ready hat open shift deployment step by step process so we as part of pre-implementation steps we validated infrastructure we configured dns just now we val we configured the dhcp also Okay, so that's it. In our next session, I will show you how we can download the Red Hat OpenShift installer specifically for vSphere platform. And once we download it, we have to upload it to the OCP helper server. That procedure I will show you in the next session. Okay, thank you. If you're watching this video first time, please do view, like, share, and subscribe to the Gnan Cloud Garage channel. If you're already subscribed, I appreciate all your support. Bye for now.